Hi, I'm David from DaveDen Web Dev, and in this video, you will learn how to use the sanitize value feature in JetForm Builder. Impute security is very important, especially when you offer front end submission forms to your users because you are giving them the ability to either add or modify data in the database, and you don't want them to add malicious code or wrongly imputed code, which can break your entire website. So in today's video, we'll be focusing on sanitization, but there are generally three levels of impute security, which are the validation, sanitization, and escaping. We'll touch on the other two, but we'll be focusing on how we can easily apply sanitization to our imputes using JetForm Builder. So now let's jump right in. Here we have an example of a single page that was created with meta fields from Jet Engine. And at the top of the page, we have a button that says Edit Event. That is only visible to the editor of the page or the admin. And when I click on the button, it takes me to the front end form, which was created using Jet Form Builder. If you don't know how to create a front end form, there will be a link in the description to go and watch a separate video which will teach you how to create a front end form that can update or create a new post. But in today's video, we're going to be focusing on the validation. So here we have the form, it has been automatically filled. And let's go ahead and check out the actual post. So this is the event. Let me go ahead and edit it. And so you see the events. We just have different meta fields that was created using the Jet Engine plugin. So we have the start date, end date. We have a fake slug, a short description, a long description. Then we have some author details. And everything is being populated into the event and we can edit everything from the front end form. So let's go ahead and see the first thing, which is impute validation. Impute validation is the process of checking impute data to confirm that it meets some predefined criteria for format, range, type, and some other characteristics. Let's take an example of an email field. Here in the backend form, I've already added some impute fields and I've added the author email, which is just a text field as well. But then when you go down in the block properties, under the field, you see field type. I've set the type to email and that is what is creating the validation. So if I don't set it to email, let's say I set it to text and I save it and I come to the front end, let me refresh the page. You'd see under the email, I can just set an invalid email like my URL and I say submit and the form will be submitted successfully and it will actually save the author email as devden.co.uk, which you can see from the front end. So let's go to the front end and I refresh the page you'd see that the email was changed to a URL instead of an email. But once I set up the validation rule, coming back to the form, and I change the field type to email, and I save it, then I go back to the form, refresh it. You see that when I try to save this form again, like this, it should give me an error. So submit, I get an error because devden.co.uk is not a valid email. If I try writing something like maybe at without any username and I press submit again, it gives me an error. It says that please, the part following the at, so I should add something before that. Then now I can finally add everything I want to so test Josh or something. And I press submit. This time the form was submitted successfully. And when I go to the front end and I refresh, see, I get my email field successfully added. So that's it for validation. With validation, 
it is direct and instant, so it's either going to be yes or no. The field will either pass or fail the validation. Whereas with the other two, that is with the sanitization and escaping, it is more lenient, but they do things in a different way. So let me show you an example of trying to do sanitization using an email field. So I'll come back to the form. This time I'll set it back to a text field. Then to do the sanitization, when you click on your form field, you see a brush sign in the toolbar. When I click on that, it shows you all the sanitization rules you can get. We have the sanitization for sanitized email, sanitized key. What sanitization does is that it takes the input field and then it strips out any character that it sees that is not valid for that input. So based on the kind of rules you've set, it will strip out different kinds of characters from the input so that it makes it a valid input. Before we even do the sanitized email, let me first show you with a regular email. If you try to do something like come back to the form and say you try to maybe add some quotation mark with a space inside and some spaces all around the form and I try to press submit, the form will not be sent successfully. It will give you an error. But with sanitization, it does something different, which I'll show you now. So let me come back to the form. Then I'll change the type to text. I'll give it sanitize email. I'll save it. Then I'll come back to the form, refresh it. And this time, I'll put that same double quotation mark, put a space everywhere, put a space even between test and Josh. Then I go ahead and I press, or let me use another name here. So maybe John or Jake. Then I press submit. The form will still send successfully, but watch what happens to the input. It basically removes all of the extra special characters that don't belong within an email. So that's the difference between validation and sanitization. Validation will completely cancel the input, whereas sanitization will still allow you to send it, but it will strip out any character that it feels that is not part of that kind of structure or the pattern. So that's the difference. That is how you can do for sanitizing emails. One other benefit for this sanitization is for your kind of text. For example, let's go back. You see you have a heading. Ideally in your heading, you've already set up the heading, how you want it to look like. You don't want your users to come over here and start trying to change the color or trying to change the alignment or anything. You just want them to add in the text as plain text without any kind of formatting. But watch what happens if I don't do any kind of sanitization to the fields. So for my post title, let's come back to the form. You see, I have a post title. I can come over here and I put maybe an emphasis. So EM put at the end slash EM. Then I go ahead to save the form. You see, the form will be saved successfully. And when you go to the front end and refresh, you see that it was applied to the form, which is not what we want. We don't really want our users to start changing things and adding text because most of our users, as we know, they might go ahead and copy files from some unknown Word document, which contains so many characters that are not needed in the front end. So what we can do now is apply some form of sanitization to clean up the input so that what gets into the database is only the plain text. So what we can do is come back to the form. Then the form is for the title. So I'll come to the title. I'll click on the brush symbol, which says sanitize value. Then I'll choose sanitize text. Nicely, they have already added some tooltips, so you can read through the tooltip to see how to use it. So this is the sanitized text. It will remove any kind of characters, even 
white spaces and anything like that, it will remove from the form because we don't need like extra white spaces. We don't need some return characters because you just want a straightforward title for our form. So when I do this and I save it, come back to the front end form, refresh it, and I simply save the form the way it is. Or well, let me put something else. So I'll put like a B slash B and I save it. Watch what happens. It cleans up everything and just returns only the characters. It removes any of those HTML tags that we added because those are not needed. We just want plain text. So that is it for the sanitize text. Next, let's take a look at sanitize text area. The sanitized text area is similar to the sanitized text because it removes any unwanted HTML tags, but it adds a difference, which is that it allows you to add extra white spaces and carriage returns. This is especially useful for your excerpts and short descriptions where you want to allow users to add extra white space, but you don't want them to be adding any kind of HTML tag to it. So now let's look at an example. So here we are back to the example form that we created and we have a text area field for excerpt. And when we come to the front end, you can see the text area field for the short description. Right now, you can add any kind of tag you want because there's no kind of sanitization. So now I can add a B tag here with a slash B. Then I can add something like an M with a slash M. Then I can also add white spaces. So lots of white space. Let me go ahead and extend it so you can see it. Okay, then I'll go ahead and submit it. And the form will submit successfully. If we go to the front end and refresh it. Okay, Bricks does a good job of removing the extra white spaces, but the other formatting is still there. So we have our bold formatting and then we have the white space. But watch what happens when I do the sanitization and I choose text area. So sanitize text area, save it, come back to the form, refresh. And this time I'll save again and see what happens. So come over and say submit. Come back to the form, you notice some differences. The white space remains there, but all of the formatting disappears. So let's come back to our page and then I'll refresh. The carriage return remains, but any kind of HTML tag that we added has been stripped away. So that's it. Another useful input sanitization you may want to look at is the sanitized title, which helps you when you are generating post slugs. It basically converts white spaces to dashes and removes any unwanted characters that are not added to a post slug. So let's go ahead and look at it. So here we have an example of a fake post slug that I created. At the moment, if I go ahead and let's put the title as the slug without any form of sanitization, when I save it, and I go to the front end and I refresh. The slug has the capital letters, it has the white space and everything like that. But this is not good for a post slug. A post slug should not have any kind of white space. So how can we fix it? We can just use the sanitization. So I'll come back to the post slug, put the sanitization and I'll say sanitize title. If you read the description, it explains it. So click on that, press save, come back to the form, refresh. I'll leave the data as it is currently and I press submit. Now watch what happens. It converts everything to small letters and then it adds dashes between the words instead of spaces. So if I come back, refresh, we get a proper post slug. So that's how you can create post slugs and you are sure that it will be a valid post slug. There are a ton of other ones that you can use 
and I will leave a link to it in the description. Here is a documentation where you can go ahead and see all of the different fuels and what they do. But let me go ahead and explain some of them. So some of the useful ones that you may want are things like the positive integer, which will help you with like your post IDs because your post ID should be a positive number and it should be an integer. You cannot have 1.2. So you might want to use the positive integer. You might want to use something like the positive numbers for your cash because you don't want to have a negative number for your price. You want only positive numbers for price. So you can use the positive number for prices. You can sanitize for integers. You can sanitize for the username. So you, you want to be able to allow your users, especially for front-end user registration forms. You don't want your users to be adding characters that are invalid or illegal. So you can use the sanitize username, which will remove any characters that are not for the username. You have sanitize URL as well to help you to clean up a URL to make sure it is the right format so it doesn't break your website. And you can also create custom ones. And that's it. Those are the different kind of things you can do with the sanitization. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please do leave a thumbs up, leave a like, share the video. Then if you have any questions or any comments, please do write them in the comment section. We'll take a look and try to answer those questions as best as we can. So until next time, bye.